Welcome to Question Period Highlights for May 29, 2024. Pierre and Justin square off. Let's go. The Prime Minister has had a revelation. In an interview with the Halifax Chronicle Herald, he told how he responded to people asking for him to spend even more government money. And he said, and I quote, as soon as you do that, inflation goes up by exactly the same amount. Oh, right? Oh. Right. <laughs> Why didn't I think of that? <laughs> Spending money you don't have actually causes inflation. He's in the middle of having epiphanies, has he also realized that budgets don't balance themselves? The Conservative Party has been using that approach uh, about concerns on inflation to stand against things like national uh, food programs for kids or dental care for seniors. They have stood and objected against and even campaigned against dental care for seniors over the past many months. But we've delivered to over 100,000 seniors of the 2 million who've already registered for dental care the support that they hadn't gotten in years or even decades. But he stands against it with some uh, you know, made-up excuse around inflation when delivering <laughs> services delivers for Canadians. He calls his own words a made-up excuse, Mr. Speaker. You can't wow. make this stuff up. He said that when people ask him, can you send us more benefits or send us an extra thousand dollars a month? Well, he rep responds, as soon as you do that, inflation goes up by exactly the same go. amount. Oh, right? That is exactly why over the past years we've been focused on bringing down inflation oh. by supporting Canadians. And it is working for the past four months, Mr. Speaker. Inflation has been down in the Bank of Canada target range while we continue to increase supports for Canadians, increase dental care for Canadians with Conservatives that campaigned against, supports for senior supports for young people, increased investments in child care, bringing child care fees down to $10 a day. These are the investments we're making that do not add to inflation but add to Canadians' well-beings as they're making ends meet. That's what we stand for. He finally, for once, thought about monetary policy. <laughs> he said, as soon as you spend more, inflation goes up by exactly the same amount, right? And he is right for once. But repeating the same costly promises that he has already broken does not change that fundamental monetary rule. So will the Prime Minister acknowledge that yes, the economy is about numbers, that people pay their rent in numbers, their gas in numbers, their groceries in numbers, and that the numbers are too high? Fundamental difference in perspective between the Conservatives and this Liberal government. The economic situation of Canada is one of the best in the G7, one of the best in the world. And the independent credit rating agencies continue to give us AAA scores. The federal government is doing well, but Canadians need support. So we are choosing to deliver supports to Canadians with this solid fiscal position. Dental care, a national food policy, national disability benefits, uh, help uh, for housing and investments in the kind of supports for Canadians that he has stood against every step of the way. So we build almost 200,000 houses and apartments with the average rent being $973 for a one-bedroom apartment. But this Prime Minister is not worth the cost of housing, which has doubled uh, nine years after he and the NDP took power. What is he doing about it? He's giving half a billion dollars to the mayor of Toronto, who has just jacked up housing, home building taxes by 20%. Why does he reward local government gatekeepers that block the homes that Canadians need? We are leading on the efforts to solve this housing crisis with a plan that is ambitious and concrete. Meanwhile, after having his housing bill panned by experts as being, quote, exceptionally weak response to the housing crisis riddled with loopholes, the Conservative leader chose to repeatedly delay debate in this House since October on his bill. That's because he just doesn't care. When he was minister, he lost 800,000 affordable apartments and only built six affordable homes. Actually, the number is closer to 200,000, but the Prime Minister has never been very good with numbers, right? Uh, 
so the prime minister cites the government funded bureaucrats and liberal academics to bolster his approach which has doubled housing costs in just nine years partly because he gives money to municipalities and politicians like Winnipeg, where they just block 2,000 homes right next to a government-funded transit station built for those homes. Why won't he accept my common sense plan to give bonuses to those municipalities that permit more building and penalties to those that, that stand in the way? We criticized rightly the leader of the opposition who when he was housing minister only built six affordable homes for Canadians across the country. But it is understandable, Mr. Speaker, because he was part of a government that took the federal government out of the building of, of affordable housing. They chose that the federal government had nothing to do with housing across the country. That's why for 10 years of non-involvement of the federal government, uh, that leaves echoes. We've stepped up and invested in communities, invested in partnerships. We're getting the homes built. We're delivering for Canadians. Housing costs have doubled since he became prime minister. They were half when I was housing minister. Housing costs have run, have gone up 40% faster than wages. A bigger gap than in any other G7 country. Why? Because he's building bureaucracy and not homes. Why won't he accept my common sense plan to require municipalities permit 15% more building, sell off 6,000 federal uh, buildings to build homes, and cut taxes so builders can build. Just like when he was housing minister, his solution is to do less to help Canadians, to invest less in supporting municipalities as they build housing, to get out of the way and leave Canadians to fend for themselves. That is his political philosophy. It is a political philosophy. It's just not the one that supports Canadians. It's it's not the one that is delivering for Canadians as we step up with the most ambitious and achievable housing plan this country has ever seen. We will continue to be there to invest in housing accelerators. We will be there to continue to take the GST off of purpose-built apartments. We will be there for Canadians. Not a chance. That's what the president of the Residential Construction Council said when asked if this prime minister would keep his promise to build 3.9 million homes by 2031. So let's hear it from the prime minister. To, to reach that target, he'd have to build 550,000 homes per year. So yes or no, will the prime minister hit the target of 550,000 homes this year Yes or no. no. Canada is facing a housing crisis and we need to take real action towards it, which is what we've done with the most ambitious and uh, achievable plan uh, that this country's ever seen. But, Mr. Speaker, that's not to say we haven't had housing crises before. It is not to say we haven't solved housing crises before. At the end of World War II, there was a need for massive new housing and Canada stepped up and got that housing built. Indeed, when the boomers came of age, there was a need for massive housing and we made investments and the federal government helped build housing across the country for boomers. We are doing that now as we build housing. It was a wonderful history lesson except it didn't answer the question. He promised he'd lower housing costs in 2015. He doubled them. He promised he'd double home building. It actually went down and is still dropping. But now he's promising 3.9 million brand new homes by 2031. That means he'd have to build 550,000 this year and every year. So once again, will the Prime Minister keep his promise to build 550,000 homes this year? Yes or no. The leader opposite speaks of 2015. Well, we took office with a commitment to get this government back, the federal government back in the business of building housing. We launched a national housing strategy in 2017 that put two and a half million Canadians into new or refurbished homes, and we've continued to invest ever since. We're building homes on public lands. We're converting underused federal offices into homes. We're taxing vacant lands to incentivize construction. We're building apartments, bringing rents down with top-ups to the apartment construction loan program. We're scaling up modular housing. We're launching Canada Builds to lead a Team Canada effort to build more homes and more. The question was not how quickly he could read off talking points written to, for him by his staff. The question was, 
whether he's going to break yet another housing promise. Remember, he promised he'd lower housing costs, he doubled them. He promised he'd double the, co the number of homes built, they went down. Now he's promising 3.9 million new homes by 2031. That means 550,000 new homes this and every year. Will he keep that promise? Yes or no? The leader of the opposition's criticism is there's too many measures in our housing plan. Housing uh, should be solved by a simple, one-size-fits-all solution, according to the leader of the opposition. That's perhaps how he managed to build only six affordable homes when he was Minister of Housing. Because, yes, we have a broad range of initiatives that are delivering on housing, like topping up the Housing Accelerator Fund with $400 million, a new $6 billion Canada Housing Infrastructure fund to help communities build. We're leveraging transit funding to build more homes. We're launching a housing design catalog. We're incentivizing more skilled trade workers. He's announcing a catalog, everybody. Hey, right on. Give him a round of applause. Come on, give him a round of applause. You can't afford a home. You might end up in a tent. Your rent is doubled. But hey, you've got a brand new catalog. The question was, will he build 550,000 new homes, yes or no? He mentioned the history lesson. Well, if he was housing minister, he should have known that the way we solved the housing crisis after World War II was by putting forward a catalog of homes that builders could access to build extremely rapidly right across the country. So, yes, that's one of the measures we're bringing back. And his mockery of concrete initiatives that are going to deliver for Canadians is exactly what's wrong with his approach. He'd rather mock and insult than actually roll up his sleeves and get solutions built for Canadians. I think that the Bransfield family of four in Calgary can tell him all about austerity because that's what they're living right now because of his housing hell, his carbon taxes and his inflation. They said close quote, we're having to choose between paying a bill or getting food and that can be really hard. It makes things really difficult. And I just don't see an end in sight. Will the Prime Minister accept our common sense plan to axe the tax, fix the budget, build the homes, so that the Bransfield family and so many others can eat, heat and house themselves? Speaker, I disagree with the Leader of the Opposition who wants to take away the Canada carbon rebate checks that arrive four times a year in the bank accounts of the Bransfield families. Indeed. Eight out of ten Canadians, according to the Parliamentary Budget Officer, are better off with the Canada carbon rebate uh, as we fight uh, for climate change with uh, the price on pollution. Eight out of ten Canadian families from coast to coast in the jurisdictions where the carbon price applies are better off. That includes, most likely, the Bransfield family, uh, and we will continue to be there for them. This plan to axe the tax, build the homes, fix the budget, and stop the crime. But of course, the NDP is keeping the, this costly prime minister in office for another year and a half. Well, they, people starve and are forced to live in tents. Those Canadians who've been able to hold on to their homes, they can't afford a vacation, but maybe a staycation. So we're asking today that the prime minister vote for a motion we will introduce tomorrow, which will give Canadians a 35 cent a litre gas tax break until Labor Day. Will the prime minister ax the taxes so Canadians can have a staycation? The Conservative Party is proposing to eliminate the Canada carbon rebate. This is a rebate that arrives four times a year in the pockets of Canadian families that, according to experts, economists and the Parliamentary Budget Officer, puts more money in the pockets of eight out of ten Canadian families in the jurisdictions in which it applies. This is more money in people's pockets while we fight climate change with the most effective plan against climate change Canada has ever seen. This is what the Conservative Conservative leader continues to rally against here, here. affordability and climate yeah. fight. Of course, the Prime Minister is doing neither. After nine years, the NDP Liberal Prime Minister is not worth the cost, and neither is his carbon tax, which the Parliamentary Budget Officer finds costs more to 60% of Canadians than they get back in phony rebates. Uh, Mr. Speaker, going into the summer, the Prime Minister plans to hike taxes again. 
Canadians need a break now more than the ever. Can he put aside his wacko ideology long enough to give Canadians a break by axing all the taxes on fuel for summer vacation. It's not ideology to understand that fighting climate change and growing the economy while putting money in people's pockets is a good thing because that's exactly what this government has, has done. Excluding the pandemic, our emissions are now the lowest they've been in 25 years because of our plan that prices pollution and puts more money back in the pockets out of eight of ten Canadian families. Families. The fact that he refuses to understand that you don't have a plan for the economy if you don't have a plan to fight climate change right. is yet another proof of the fact that his approach is not going to succeed for Canadians. Speaker, he ranks 62nd out of 67 countries oh, on fighting climate change. This after he's brought in a 17 cent a litre carbon tax. <laughs> a, tax, a tax that he wants to nearly quadruple up to 61 cents a litre if, God forbid, he's ever elected. We have two million people lined up at food banks, a quarter of Canadians skipping meals because they can't afford food. One in four adults missing meals so they can feed their kids. For God's sakes, why won't he give Canadians a summer vacation from all his taxes and accept our common sense plan? Well, there you have it. What do you think about this question period battle? Thanks for watching and subscribe if you like the show.